Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to onboard social media management clients and you're not going to learn this just from some guy that looked at another YouTube video and copied that person and is now going to tell you how to onboard clients. No, nope, you're going to learn from myself. I've had over 355 clients in my marketing agency. We've done over a million dollars in revenue and I have done this for over three years and I have successfully coached over 100 people to at least $5,000 per month. Some of which now run agencies that do six figures a year, some multi six figures per year. So I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step process I would follow if I started a brand new social media management business tomorrow and I had a client ready to hop on board. So let's start with step number one. The first thing you've gotta ensure is that you get paid and you have a contract that is signed by your client. So before you do anything, before you have an onboarding call, you get them to fill out a form, before you get access to any social media, make sure they pay you and then sign your contract. You should not settle for clients that are going to pay you once you've done the work or at the end of the month. All 355 of the clients I worked with paid upfront. It's all about your positioning, how you do your sales call, and your ability to show them that that's just how things are. If you've been paid, and you've sent a contract to your client and they haven't signed that contract, I would still not do any onboarding until they have signed this. There's a few reasons this is very important. Number one, I wanna make sure that there's a minimum term in the contract, ideally three to six months, okay? So I know this client is committing to working with me, committing to having me or my team manage their social media for at least three or six months. If they are not willing to commit to that, it's my job to show them how that actually makes more sense for them. I worked with a lot of fitness professionals in my business and what really helped was to kind of explain to them what an average journey would look like. For example, let's just say this is their social media journey and they're starting down here. This is where their follower count is and their goal is to get to here, okay? Let's say this is a thousand followers and they wanna get to 10K followers. You know, this whole straight line just doesn't really happen and this definitely does not happen in just 30 days. Could you theoretically get a client from a thousand to 10,000? in 30 days, for sure. You know, I had a client where we got them 80,000 new followers in three months, but I do not want my client coming in thinking that that's what's magically gonna happen. But I want my client to understand that maybe we have a spike in growth at the start and maybe that levels off. And maybe there's a testing phase and we've got to look at different strategies and we're just optimizing to figure out what's actually gonna work. And then we hit another growth spike and then maybe it levels off again. And then we hit another growth spike and we hit 10K. And so what I wanna do is explain this in a way where I can show them the milestones of look, 30 days might just get us here. Like we might get to 2000 followers. 60 days, maybe we're at 3000, 4000, right? And our end goal, if it is 10K, maybe that's gonna take the full 90 days. And maybe it actually takes longer. So you can see if a client has not signed this and they're not committing to that contract, the probably thinking is I'll try this guy or girl for a month, we'll see how it goes and if it's not good, I'll dip and I'll go somewhere else. We don't want that. We want clients that are bought in, someone that respects the work you do and sees the value in you as a social media manager. Alrighty, now if you're brand new to this, you might be thinking, how do I get paid? How do I even build a contract? What should it look like? That's, that's a topic for a whole other video. For the people I work with and I mentor, what I do is I just, give them this on a plate. I give them the contracts that I used in my business and I show them all the packages of what I sold to businesses. So they don't have to even think about how much to charge. They can just use my packages. And then I've also created a pricing calculator they can use as well. So whichever route you go down, working with me, somebody else or nobody, just make sure you have these two things dialed in. All right, so stage two, once we have been paid and we've had our contract signed. At this point, you've probably had a call with the business owner. I'm gonna assume you've had what we would call a sales call, a 30, 40 minute call. You've walked through what you do, shown packages or a package, and they've said, yep, cool, we're gonna go for that. In front of that call, you probably have a good understanding of their business, right? You probably have a good chat. You have a good idea as to what they're looking for out of this, what they've done before, what they've struggled with with social media. What we wanna do next though, is book a second call. And this is our onboarding call, our short OB call. This is a different call, okay? This is, okay, you've actually committed to working with me now let's get a little bit clearer on now let's get a little bit clearer on everything you've done in the past the goal you have for this and how fast you want to get there and I want to drill down into more of the specific you know this is where we're going to cover things like I'll get them talking more about their brand right like their voice on social media their target market you know who exactly are we selling to and I want them to give me as much as they can I'm also just to facilitate this process I'm going to send them an onboarding form okay so again with people I work with I give them this form this form should be designed to ask the questions that you might ask them on a call, but to give it to them before the call that they should fill out before your call so that you come into the call, 
with a lot more ammunition. For example, let's just say you're a business owner and you work with me. I wanna have an idea of your brand voice, your target market, links to your websites, links to Google Drive folders where you have content already made. I wanna have that before we have our call so I can go through that and that will help me prep some ideas and a bit of a strategy. Please do not go and do your onboarding call and actually start the work before you get paid. Okay, don't skip around in this process. It's designed step by step because either I have not done this before and got burnt or people I know of have done that. You know, a friend of mine who runs a very successful agency does around 30,000 per month just last week had a client sign up or what he thought was sign up to his agency. They didn't pay him, but they booked an onboarding call and he got access to some information, some content, some guidelines from them. And he just assumed, cool, that's another new client. Well, they have since backed out of the deal. This is why we do pay first contract and then we start the onboarding. Now, at this stage, what we are gonna do, you're kind of, let's just break this down a little bit more, okay? So step 2A is send out your onboarding form. Hey John, looking forward to working with you. Let's book our onboarding call soon. Here's the onboarding form. Please fill that out first and let me know once done. Next is the onboarding call and we wanna get them booked for the onboarding call. To give you a rough timeline, let's say it's Monday and they have paid you and they've signed up. Well, a good idea for your onboarding call, in my experience, is somewhere within the next seven days. I wouldn't do it right away, and I'd give yourself a few days. So let's just say it's Friday. The reason I want to do this is this gives me a few days. Okay, This gives me this time where I can start to look at the documents. They might have sent me photos and content. Right, I can do a bit of analysis before the call. Cool. Now, let's move on to step three. So step three is where we now take all the information we have from our first call, the information we have from the onboarding form, and we start to build out content ideas, content pillars, and ultimately a content calendar. What I'm trying to do here is get a really good gauge of what type of content I can create for them, what's working well in their industry. What content do they already have, right? Because if you're working with a, um, a restaurant and you're not gonna physically shoot content for them, they're just gonna give you access to a folder of content. You wanna make sure that you can see what's in there and then craft your content strategy and your plan around that, right? Because if they just have photos of their menu and pretty basic photos of dishes they serve, we're gonna have to be thinking outside of the box when it comes to the content calendar. We might have to focus more on memes and quotes and things that we can very easily create that are not actual photos or videos of their content. So before you actually take the onboarding call, you should have this built out. You prep the ideas, you prep the content pillars, and this ultimately brings you to the content calendar. Now content ideas, what are these? These are ideas, right? You need help with this stuff, of course, you can use AI, you can use ChatGPT, just don't just use that, like use your, use your brain as well. But this will of course help. Content pillars, again, go ahead, use AI if it's gonna help you. The main thing to understand here, so I don't want this to be too complex, if I'm working with a fitness coach, the ideas might be fat loss, right? just random topics, basically. Nutrition facts. And then over here, the content pillars are gonna be more concrete pillars. See what I did there? Concrete pillars about what the content should be about. Give you an idea. One pillar might be social proof. And this is testimonials, clients they've worked with, results they've gotten. Number two might be viral content. And this is more clickbaity, trendy content, right? Stuff that's gonna bring eyeballs. Number three might be more of their personal story, create the relatability, make people like them. And so then I can take all my topics and I can put them in here. I can go, okay, fat loss, cool. Let's talk about my story about that. Nutrition facts. Let's go and actually show a piece of social proof about a client that got a great result and link that back to a nutrition fact. So you're gonna use this stuff together. And this all leads us to the content calendar, which is a beautiful looking you know, spreadsheet or a Word doc that you can go and present to your client in the next step, which is step four on your onboarding call. So this onboarding call shouldn't just be a chat. I would ideally want to record this so that I can use it later on. In fact, I could even take the call transcript, right, if I record it and then get the words from the call, feed that to ChatGPT or an AI tool and give it the context, tell it, hey, this is a call I had with my client who just signed up with me. I want you to help me build out more of a content strategy based on what they've talked about. Here's what I already have and give ChatGPT a list of ideas and pillars and your content calendar you've built so far, and it'll just help you build an even better one. I want you to record it, I want you to set a nice frame, so when you hop onto this call, you know, don't just ramble, and don't have them talk out at you for an hour, like explain to them, look, purpose, and what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna go through this, 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 and this. Give them the clear list. And what that list would ideally be, 
Maybe that I would explain to them that you want to get a little bit more about, about them, who they are, their brand, what they stand for, things that you can use in the content. And then to actually pull up your content calendar, screen share, show it to them live on the call, go through it step by step. Finally, the, the juggernaut of this call is to get logged in. You see, if you're doing social media management, you do need to be logged in, okay? Whether you're logged in directly to, let's say, their Instagram page, or you're gonna use a third-party software like later.com or Buffer or Hootsuite, you wanna make sure that you do this on the call. It'll just be easier, trust me. If they've got two-factor authentication or extra verification set up on the account, it's just gonna make it nice and easy. Hop on the call, get logged in there, and then, boom, no questions later on. Step five of this entire process, we now have our onboarding call done. Onboarding form has been filled out. We've then built out ideas, content calendar. It's approved, it's all good to go. This is where we now obviously get to work and this is where you're gonna create content and when you're also gonna send that content for approval. You see, when I would work with a client, I would not just create content and hope they like it and then post it to their social media because if you do that, they will probably text you at 2 a.m. some random Friday night and they'll go, whoa, what did you do? That piece of content looks absolutely horrible. I would never say that in a million years. What have you done to my brand? And then they quit. But what I want you to do is send it to them beforehand. Now you wanna do this and ideally you wanna get ahead of schedule. You know, Try and get yourself one week ahead so that if they need to make changes to the post that's coming up in two days from now, they can do that but ideally it's actually done already for the week ahead, okay? You know, a tool I've used that I'm not sponsored by and never have had an affiliate deal with or anything is Go Visually. I've sent them a ton of business because they're just really good. It actually will allow you to easily upload content. It'll send directly to your clients and they can make feedback and comments really easily. And if you have a team member, like a graphic designer, they'll actually get the notifications from that. So it's just really, really good. And then stage six is actually just now doing the, the kind of boring work of posting the content, managing their page. And this is the stuff that you'll just do every day. To give you an idea of this, if you are doing, let's say 30 pieces of content per month, and then you're posting stories for them every day, you're replying to comments, DMs, that kind of thing, you're probably looking at 20 to 30 minutes a day minimum and then probably one day a week where you sit down plan out a lot of content and you might even do you know four or five hours for that one client so that is how you will successfully and quite easily and do it really in the right way with the right expectations to onboard clients for social media management if you have any questions follow-up topics you want me to make videos about then you can pop it in the comments and i can do my best